Hi guys, thanks again for visiting us at RS Aquaculture. Here's a drone footage of a 4 acre shrimp farm that we have just leased. This property was leased because of the fact that the previous owners were not able to produce shrimp consistently due to a wide variety of reasons, mainly due to diseases and water quality. So here at RS Aquaculture, what we'll be doing with this farm is to perform a makeover in which we'll be utilizing some of the technology and some of the new methods of management to help improve the productivity of this farm. So stay tuned. So for those who are familiar with our channel, you might have seen us producing shrimps fully in the indoor setup. So while that's being worked on and being scaled at the moment, we also understand that bulk of the aquaculture production for shrimp in Asia alone still occurs out there in the traditional pond. So therefore, we've decided the main reason why we've decided to also venture in parallel into the outdoor ponds is that we believe that our technology could also help many of the folks that are stuck with this traditional pond setup to achieve sort of a good production basis and help them improve some of the issues that are having on site. So this is really for us to demonstrate our technology and how does it extend up to the pond-based shrimp farming. Unlike our shrimp farm that utilizes tap water and just adding salt to make up for the salinity requirements for shrimp or crabs, this farm will have to rely on the tidal exchange coming from the sea. So seawater is actually brought up during the high tide and we actually introduce the water into the ponds during those days where the tides are very very high. So they are, they are actually introduced via these three 8 inch pipes as you see over here. So one very, very stark difference being doing indoor farming versus the pond farming is the fact that in ponds, you will have to deal with those pests such as snails, crabs, and lots of unwanted species that tend to come in with the tide. So these are just some of the species that you typically observe. This includes seaweeds, some fish, mudskippers, and even crabs. So as you can see, for most of the pond, they can be quite affected due to overall build-up with high waste contents from the previous cultures. So the first step includes for us was to lime the pond uh, to make sure that there's sufficient alkalinity. And the next step is for us to sort of pick out these unwanted species that were introduced in by the tides or left over from the previous cultures. So you can see there are a lot, a lot of these snails or, or what we call siput sedut, or even some of the crabs that are manifesting or sting in our pond, bottom of our pond. And you'll probably realize that the water, the soil and the water is also actually black. This is actually due to a lot of anaerobic reaction that has been left over from the previous farm, waste farm. Okay, so here we have one of my colleagues that is actually scraping off some of the seagrass and some of the snails into a pile before removing them. So as you can see, the pond requirement and the pond treatment for these shrimp farms are still very labor intensive and you need a lot of manpower to sort of clean up the ponds to ensure that you have removed all of these unwanted species. Right, so some of that includes, you can see a bunch of seagrass and we have these big crabs here. This crab is actually quite big, it's about four to 500 grams in size, but unfortunately we are not anywhere near our crab farm, so we'll be discarding it at the moment and not farming it. And that goes along with a lot of these snails that are also inside the ponds. So that pretty much concludes this episode. We hope you've enjoyed and follow us on our journey in helping pond-based farmers achieving better productivity and efficiency in culturing shrimps.